Hey, Algebra students, thank you for joining me here. Today we're going to be uh, rationalizing the denominator. Now, why bother? Okay, let's say we have a number. Say we have four divided by the square root of uh, by the square root of three. Why bother rationalizing that denominator? Well, first off, let's think historically. Historically, before computers, before calculators, it was really hard to divide by an irrational number like the square root of three. Not so difficult to add. Num uh, irrational numbers, not so difficult to multiply an irrational number, especially by a rational one. But dividing, that was really hard. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to take this number, or this number, and we wanted to manipulate it somehow so that instead of dividing by an irrational number, would be multiplying by, by an irrational number. And you can do that, and I'll show you how in just a second. So uh, now these days, that's really not so much of an issue because we have calculators, we have computers, and you can take uh, irrational numbers and you, know, you can estimate them uh, uh, really, really far and so it's not that big a deal. But we still have this, uh, um, uh, the, the simplest form of the number is considered to be a number that does not have an irrational number in the denominator. And it is important to have one particular simplest form of a number just so we can, well, just so you know, just so you can be able to tell when numbers are equivalent to each other, okay? So anyway, that's the why. Now let's do it. Uh, now, we've seen this before, when you have a number like 5 times the square root of 10, and you want to have, you want to get that radical, get that irrational number out of the denominator, all you do is, you just multiply times the square root of 10 over the square root of 10. Easy enough. In my numerator, I get 5 times the square root of 10. In my denominator, I get square root of 10 times the square root of 10, which is, well, 10. Okay? And so I end up with 5 square root of 10 over 10, and of course, we can do a little simplification here. The 5 and the 10 are both divisible by 5, and we end up with the answer square root of 10 divided by 2. Okay? My recommendation is when you do a problem like this, take a calculator, divide by 5 by the square root of 10, divide the square root of 10 by 2, and check it out and make sure that your decimal approximations match each other. Okay? It's a good way of sort of uh, verifying that you've done it correctly. 4 times the square root of 3. Same type of thing. Uh, we're going to multiply both numerator and denominator times the square root of 3. And what do we get? We get 4 square root of 3 over 3, because 3 times the square root of 3 is 3. Easy enough, right? OK. Well, what about when you have, what about when you have 4 divided by the square root of 3 plus 1? Okay? Square root of 3 plus 1. It's also an irrational number, right? Okay? Add an irrational number to a rational number and you get an irrational number. So, hmm, what would we do there? Well, it's a similar process, but not exactly the same. What we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to multiply by the square root of 3 minus 1 over itself. Okay? Now remember, as long as we're multiplying by something over itself, we're multiplying by 1 and therefore not changing the value of our original number. So it's a, it's a totally legitimate thing to do. Uh, but why did I choose the square root of 3 minus 1? Well, it's because, and we've seen this rule before, because if you take a plus b and you multiply times a minus b, what you get is a squared minus b squared, known as the difference of squares, okay? So here we have a plus b, square root of 3 plus 1. a minus b, square root of 3 minus 1. So if I multiply those together, what am I going to get? I'm going to get the square root of 3 squared, also known as 3, minus 1 squared, also known as 1. And that's going to give us a very rational denominator there. Let me get this out of the way. All right, so what do I have in my numerator? I have 4 times the square root of 3 minus 1, and I'm just going to keep it like that for now. Uh, I think we can all agree that, the, uh, that 3 minus 1 is just 2, okay? And so now I have 4 divided by 2, and I can simplify that, and I can say, well, those are both even. And I end up with 2 times the square root of 3 minus 1 divided by 1. Divided by 1 doesn't do anything, so that means my answer is 2 times the square root of 3 minus 1, and when I uh, distribute that 2, I get 2 times the square root of 3 
is minus 2. Huh, amazing, okay? Do it, okay? Take 4 divided by the square root of 3 plus 1. By the way, if you're using a calculator, make sure that you put that in parentheses to make sure that you get the whole thing. Divide 4 by the square root of 3 uh, plus 1, and then uh, with the same calculator, do 2 times the square root of 3 minus 2, and you will see that it gives you exactly the same number. All right? Let's try another one. Let's try... Uh, Um, let's see, let's do 6 divided by the square root of 2 plus 8, okay? Well, what are we going to What are we gonna multiply both numerator and denominator by? We're going to multiply them by the square root of 2 minus 8 over the square root of 2 minus 8, okay? In our numerator, we get uh, 6 times the square root of 2 minus 8. In our denominator, we get the square root of 2 squared which is, well, 2, minus 8 squared, which is 64, okay? 2 minus 64, that looks like a, um, that looks like negative 62 to me. And uh, we can simplify that by saying, let's divide both numerator and denominator by 2, and we're going to get 3 times the square root of 2, uh, minus 8 over negative 31, and I can simplify that by saying, uh, let's call this, um, well, divided by a negative number means my whole fraction is, uh, is uh, negative, right? So that's negative, uh, square, uh, negative 3 times the square root of 2 minus 3 times 8 is 24 over 31, and uh, you know something? Personally, I, I prefer making things positive, and so let's just uh, uh, distribute that negative to the, uh, to the numerator, and we're going to have 24 minus 3 squared of 2 over 31, and that's going to be my final answer. Okay? Again, do it on the calculator, check it, and you'll see that it's absolutely correct. Okay? Two more. Here's the first one. First one's going to be 1 over 5 plus the square root of 6. Okay, what are we going to multiply both numerator and denominator by? 5 minus the square root of 6. You're probably getting the hang of this by now. And so in the numerator, we get 1 times something is that thing, 5 minus the square root of 6. In the denominator, we get 5 squared is 25 minus the square root of 6 squared, which is... 6, and this turns out to be 5 minus the square root of 6 over 19. Easy enough. All right, one more, and this one's going to be a little weird. Okay, this time we have 4 minus the square root of 2 divided by 3 minus the square root of 2. Okay, irrational divided by irrational. Hmm, but... We can do it. We'll just do it the exact same way we did it before, right? We're going to multiply this by 3 plus the square root of 2 and 3 plus the square root of 2, okay? My denominator is easy. 3 times 3 is 9 minus square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. My numerator is a little more complicated. Let's see. I have 4 minus the square root of 2 times 3 plus the square root of 2. Let's see. If I uh, square root of 2, positive square root of 2 times negative square root of 2 is going to get me negative 2. Square root of 2 times 4 is 4 times the square root of 2. 3 times the negative square root of 2 is negative 3 times the square root of 2. And 3 times 4 is 12. Let me add all that up. And I'm going to get 12 minus the square root of 2 minus 2. And I think I can combine that 12 and 2, and I'm going to get... 10 minus the square root of 2. And that just equals 10 minus the square root of 2 divided by 7. Not bad, huh? Okay. Uh, hold it. Hang on a second. You should have caught this. I hope you did. 4 minus 3 doesn't equal negative 1. That's a positive. That's a positive. Okay. Now we're good. Okay. Now if you check this on your calculator, you'll see that 10 plus the square root of 2 divided by 7 is exactly the same 
is 4 minus the square root of, square root of 2 divided by 3 minus the square root of 2. Okay? This, seems incon this may seem inconsequential right now. It actually comes in really handy later on. So I hope you got that down. All right. Thank you very much. See you later.